Good afternoon to you viewers and subscribers. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the rebuilding process after the passage of Hurricane Melissa in Jamaica. So many have been posing the question in terms of where we are going to rebuild and how we are going to rebuild. Should we continue with the building of wooden houses or should we abandon the building of wooden houses altogether? And in my opinion, there's not a perfect yes or no answer to that question. But one thing I might add is that based on the footage that I've seen coming out after the aftermath of the hurricane, after the passage of the hurricane, the most damaged structures are mostly made of wood. And in my opinion, and based on what I've seen and based on my experience, those structures that has been totally obliterated is not properly constructed in the first place. All right. So, yes, I understand that most of those houses, they are built on family land. There are no direct proof of ownership. And we still have to take into consideration that most of the people that are affected on these lands where wooden structures is being built, right, they are at the lower end of the economic scale. So we have to call it for what it is. And they are not going to be able to build permanent black and steel building that can totally or somewhat put up a challenge, put up a formidable resistance to these modern day natural disasters all right so we have to take that into consideration and if they are going to be building or replacing these wooden structures with black and steel first and foremost they have to have proof of ownership they have to prove that they are owners of the land right and they have to have documentation to give them the permission or the building permits to go ahead and put permanent structures on these properties Right, because once they start to put up permanent building in terms of black and steel, the municipality is going to request of them to have a, an approved drawings sent into the municipality for approval. For approval, and in my estimation, and based on what I've seen, and based on accounts that I've seen coming from some of the persons that has been that have been severely affected, some of them they do not have the, the requisite documentation for this type of construction. You know, some people say they get the land from their from their grandparents, you know what I mean, and so forth. I don't want to get in into that. Right? But another part of the discussion I have seen where many people who have concrete structures where their roof has been totally blown off, they want to replace those wooden roofs with structural roof okay with slab roof and i'm saying we have to be careful also how we go about that all right because some of those buildings they are built back in the 70s 80s and they're not structurally strong to carry a slab roof okay and if you're going to put up a slab roof on those existing building that has been built with timber roof you have to ensure that the substructure can carry the weight of the slab. So an uh, engineer report has to be done for for hits for something like that to be done to prove that the the substructure can carry the the, the slab roof before that is can done. You have, you have to seek an engineer, get an engineer report. The engineer will tell you if the substructure is strong enough to do that are ways and means where you can retrofit the substructure to accommodate a slab roof. So you probably have to cut the corners, put in your sifter columns, you're gonna have to put, put up uh, beams if the spans are too great. You have to, on top of that, put up a belt beam, put up your your wall plate, your rafters, and so forth, okay? So there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration. And we don't want to build to resist one natural disaster and create a hazard for another natural disaster because we have to take into consideration that jamaica sits on the enrique Quillo plant gardens plates 
right? A huge fault line that spans Hispaniola right through the Caribbean Sea and runs from the east to the west in the central part of the island, right? So it runs from east to west to the central part of the island. And that's a major fault line that Jamaica sits on, which, which would put us in the position of, you know, sometime in some time to come, we are going to have a massive earthquake. So the earthquake of 1692 and the earthquake of 1907, the earthquake of 1692, was, which saw the destruction of Port Royal, and the earthquake of 1907, which saw the the, the, the massive devastation in Kingston. And in, re, in more recent times, the earthquake that has just destroyed Haiti in 2010 sits on that part line, okay? And I'm saying that earthquake that hit Haiti in 2010, we could stay in Jamaica and feel the aftershock of that earthquake, okay? So we have to ensure that whatever we do in terms of you know putting on the slab roof, the, the substructure, is not waiting, right? To the point where if we get the slightest amount, the slightest earthquake, then that structure is going to be compromised. So those are things that we have to bear in consideration. All right. But just to go back to the wooden structures that has been destroyed mainly by the passage of Hurricane Melissa, what I've seen and based on my experience, those structures were poorly constructed in the first place. They're not built to withstand any form of forces, not even a tropical storm, right? I even though people might say tropical storm has passed and nothing has, has been done. But those buildings are poorly constructed based on what I've seen. The rafters are built with two by four. There are no hurricane straps. The vertical stud, the vertical stud is two by four. The minimum should be two by six. There, there are no braces in between the studs, right? vertically and horizontal to withstand wind shear or wind force there's nothing like that right so going forward i am not going to say that we should totally abandon wooden structures yes we can build wooden structures that can withstand hurricane up to a certain level or you know to be more resilient to hurricane up to a certain level if it is done properly you can't just jump up to stick at the four corners and put plywood, plywood at the side and put two upright, two, 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 or two, two before, and expect that it's going to withstand any form of wind force. That is not going to happen in this modern day natural disaster. So we have to take these things into consideration, right? And no building, whether concrete or wood, is going to be a hundred percent resistance or a hundred percent can withstand a category three four or five hurricane okay and remember now when a hurricane comes it just it not only comes with only wind problem you have flooding you have landslide you have sea surges okay and areas that are flown to to flooding they are going to be inundated with with uh, with water and you and we have seen where this or when where this hurricane have passed in some areas that are not used to flooding all of a sudden they start to flood because we are getting more than normal rainfall in this weather system how okay. can we go about building a more resilient wooden structures or a wooden house towards a hurricane force wind so in the event that you you what you have watched this video and you want to put up back your wooden house this is the way how to go about it right if you want it to last or if you want it to withstand you know up to a certain level of wind in terms of hurricane all right so don't just haphazardly go about it and put it up you know any or any you're going to waste money and time so just do it the right way and i am sure that in the event that another hurricane should pass, well, evidently, inevitably, a hurricane is going to pass again. There's no two ways about that. But your building is going to be more resistant. Not saying that it won't be damaged or, you know, or to a certain extent destroyed, but at least it can withstand a certain level of hurricane. Right? So I've come to the end of the video. I hope 
you find the video informative and if in the event if you have any questions show me a comment right and i will i'll have you more than happy to answer your question all right take it easy love respect keep safe and i and i wish all those people who have been you know severely affected i, I hope that you have we have been getting the necessary attention that is required all right maximum respect